guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter, where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. Without ado, let's get into the show. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host today, and I'm really excited about today's guest, Jeanette Anderson. She titles herself the Why Whisperer, which is going to be a really interesting conversation. She's passionate about showing expertpreneurs how to tap into their why or purpose so that they get that they matter and live like they do. So we're going to talk a lot about time, location, freedom. She shows them how to do the things at the right times and on their own terms. And she's passionate about her work after four days. She's a mentor, trainer, speaker, and been a nomad location, independent lifestyle, visiting 27 countries, allowing her to teach clients and help them be the difference they are uniquely here to be. So Jeanette, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I know uh, you have quite an impressive bio. And um, so tell people, you know, your story and you know, and we'll get right into it. All right. Well, you know, it, like many stories, it started long ago. Uh, <laughs> I remember specific incidents of um, wanting the book Heidi. I grew up really poor, lots of chaos, lots of abuse, lots of violence. And so books became my refuge. And I really wanted this book, Heidi, badly. So I, I think I came out of the womb entrepreneurial. So I, I asked my mom over and over and over again, as only a very determined Aries child can, can I get it now? How about now? Can we buy it now? How about now? Can we get it now? Please, can we buy it? Please, 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 mom. Can we buy the book? Please, how about now? And this went on for quite a while. And finally, one day she turned around and she yelled, no, we can't afford it. <laughs> and I would remember to this day, I don't remember a lot of my childhood, but I remember this moment. And I remember being really shocked, not by what she said, because I heard that all the time. We can't afford it. We can't, we don't have money, etc. But by the look on her face, the shame and the guilt and the frustration, uh. the sadness, the anger. Uh. I remember seeing the look on her face and thinking to myself, I never want to see that look on anyone else's face, not hers not mine and no one else's ever again. And it was kind of an odd thought for a five-year-old, but I remember it to the core of me. And, you know, as kids, we don't complicate things. So problem solution. So she said, we can't afford it. So I said, okay, I'll just get money. That's easy. Right. And so I had my very first business. I was almost five, uh, four, almost five. And so one day I had seen people in our housing tenement have garage sales. So I hauled everything I could out of the house and priced it. And I, mom was probably off at work and I'm sure someone was supposed to be watching me, but back in 1964, 65, it was a lot more lax, or at least in my world it was. And so I had a garage sale, highly successful. I remember running up to my mom and saying, look, mom, look, $13.72. I remember, Christopher, to this day, the amount that I made. And like I said, I came out entrepreneurial. I could count and I could, um, you know, money was easy for me to know and understand back then. Um, and I was so pleased because problem solution, right? You would think that that would be her reaction, but it wasn't. <laughs> so the bottom line is, I got spanked. She took my money. She was really mad that I sold a lot of household knickknacks and her stuff. I had to go back around the tenement house and buy it all back. I got, I didn't get back my toys. The kids wouldn't sell them back to me. So I lost most of my toys. I, I got back most of her stuff. I didn't get the book at least right then. And um, many people would say not a very successful first entrepreneurial venture, but I think it was because I learned a couple of really important things. One, don't go into business with family. <laughs> I'm kind of kidding, but not really. But really, that when we have an issue or something we want or something that we want to create in the world, that we can and that business can be a solution to that. And whether you're a doctor or a lawyer, coach, or any other kind of expert who's selling what they know, 
they can create and put, take their life into their own hands, their destiny into their own hands by being entrepreneurial, by being resourceful. Um, so I learned that. And I also really made that determination that I didn't want to see that look on anyone's face again. So that kind of became my why as I went through my life. Uh, everything that I've done has been about people, A, getting that they ma- know that they matter and living like they do by really supporting them and creating the freedom that they want to be able to have a yes life. And there's so many professionals, doctors, lawyers, et cetera, et cetera, who can't say yes to the lifestyle they want because they are time starved to giving their family what they want. Or maybe they can because they give their family things, but they don't give them the love and attention that they want. You know, part of what I love doing is supporting people and figuring out how do you get that freedom? How do you figure out your why so that it can guide and lead you and help you create the meaning that you want as, you know, a meaning, making a meaningful difference as well as a magnificent living. Very interesting. I actually, uh, I recall when, you know, in my younger years, I actually went through a similar thing, you know, with you as, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, in the, in the beginning, you know, where, you know, it's just, everybody's trying to find something and, um, you know, usually they're trying to, you know, but it's usually if you're like, significant loss, hardship, trauma, divorce, or or you're marginalized, you know, you don't fit in, um, you know, it takes a little bit longer to to, to find yourself. So, which is quite interesting. And the uh, book that you recommend will um, will, uh, be in the show notes. And uh, I always found solace in books as well, because that was like my escape. I could like escape into anything and I could, you know, be the superhero, which is, uh, you know, that's why I'm an avid reader today. Um, Mm. Yeah. Now you talk about um, using the big breakthrough was 2000 informational marketing with the internet. And so you talk about using information marketing to build your list, credibility and cash flow. And, And I'm sure people are very familiar with this, but how do you do this and help clients with their why? Well, so two things there. One of the things that I recommend is that, um, you know, many, many, because of the healthcare crisis that's going on in, in North America, especially and, and around the world, a lot of doctors have a lot of demand, but, and professionals, but that doesn't mean that they don't need to market themselves. It doesn't mean that they don't need to get new clients and especially the kind of clients they want to work with. So marketing information solving problems, being someone who provides value before I've even met you is a great way for you to um, attract clients, to filter clients, to get the right kind of clients. And one of the best ways to do that is creating information-based marketing. So content-based marketing that you can put out there, eBooks, check templates, things that will help them with seeing you as their ally, seeing you as their valued, trusted advisor before they may have even met you. And I really recommend that we incorporate in everything we do, your website, your your about us, your, any books you write, anything that you do, any marketing that you do, that you incorporate your why, why you do what you do. Because people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. If they're buying what you do, you're a commodity. If they buy a doctor's checkup, then you're just like every other doctor. I can go to any doctor and get that. Even if you're a specialist, you're still a commodity. But if you have a why that people can understand and resonate with you, it differentiates you right away from everyone else. You're no longer a commodity. You are now someone they can relate to. It fast tracks the no like trust factor. And it has a lot of benefits because it really does keep us motivated because it's it's our purpose it's why we do what we do and sometimes in the day-to-day life of delivering services we can lose sight of why we're doing this and it becomes all about the shoulds and have tos and it can be really really hard so keeping our why front and center is not only smart from a marketing perspective but it's also helpful in keeping us going moving forward and staying on track yeah, it's quite interesting. When I read this uh, in the early days of the internet, when I was like hearing about information marketing, and basically you could become an expert and you could be an influencer and you could basically 
it's it could be a way to educate and entertain could bring in audience marketing advertising all of this through just educating and now it's first it was through blogs words now it's through pictures and now it's video um mm -hmm. which is so powerful like you don't my nephew or you know gen gen z or gen alpha they don't realize like the power of what the internet has done and um and you don't have to go through traditional media outlets you can be become your own influencer uh mm -hmm. your own niche right away um which is which is just so fascinating um exactly well and you've done that really well you've used your book and your pod book to not only differentiate you but to make you the authority bring in sponsorship give you great positioning um so yeah you 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 live that well and then the uh you know what you brought up uh another interesting point which is that um you know the number one business question you must answer to be successful uh, tell us more about that well and i i think it's your why because so let me define what i mean by that um if we if we, first of all, if we don't know why we're doing what we're doing, it gets to be drudgery pretty damn fast. And it's hard to get out of bed some mornings and to want to do what we do. If it just becomes about the money, if it just becomes about the I got to pay the bills, it gets boring. It gets to be hard and it gets to be drudgery. So really, the number one question we have to answer is why? Why are we doing what we do? And and I define your why as the intersection of what you're healing from the past and what you long for for the future for yourself and others so what you're healing from the past and what you long for from for the future for yourself and others which is a bit of a different definition than simon sinek for instance in his book start with why um and i don't you typically call it purpose or mission because those words are kind of laden but i think um human beings are meaning making machines and if we don't have meaning that we're directing that we're focused on that we're going to create this life of meaning or this is my purpose or this is why i'm doing what i'm doing then then life creates it for us and it tends to be those shoulds and have tos and it's we're not in the driver's seat anymore so really to take back our direction our sovereignty over our life the sense of of empowerment around who i am and why i'm here who do i want to be in the world we really need to know our why why we do what we do. And it's not just because I want to help people. If I hear that one more time, I'm going to gag because um, that's what everyone says. And that doesn't differentiate anyone. We all have our flavor of why. Every single listener in your audience has a reason why they became and did what they did. And I guarantee you, um, you know, when I listen to, when I do why sessions with people, I listen most of the time. In fact, every time I've done this, but I'll say most of the time, because maybe sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it starts in your childhood. It starts with, like you said, those formative experiences. We, we create a window that we look at the world through, and we see and hear different things. We care about different things. Even people growing up in the same family come out with different whys, different perspectives on the world. And when we incorporate that into what we're doing, into really practically the about us page in your website like you know i, I was just writing a, a note to a client saying for the love of god stop saying i'm a speaker author coach everybody is a speaker author coach so what you're a commodity it doesn't help you at all um and it has no whiff them no what's in it for me in it whatsoever our about us is not about you it's about your clients or your patients it's about how you can help them it's about what's in it for them to work with you and even if you happen to be lucky enough to be in a an in industry where there's lots of demand and not enough supply you still want good clients and the way to filter the good clients instead of the pita factor the pain in the ass factor mm -hmm. is clients is to attract the ones that you really want to work with and that is that you, they're going to resonate with your why. So putting that out there helps them. So, you know, I mostly work with women and a few smart men uh, to really support them in growing their business. And when I talk about why I do what I do, when I talk about my mom and how I grew up and and being entrepreneurial as a way to survive and and so forth, it and that transforming into the key to freedom and a yes life, then people get it. They get why I'm passionate about this. They get why I care so much. And it separates me from everyone else who says I'm a speaker, author, and coach or a coach and trainer. Blah. 
right? <laughs> so it really is about how do we position ourselves differently? How do we stand out using what we care about, what we're passionate about is one of the best ways. And I, especially after the period we've come through with, with COVID and all the isolation and that created the separation, the us and them, the us versus them, we need connection more than anything. And we need to connect on real stuff, real humanity, not fluff, not marketing blither, but real, who are you? Why do you care? And why should I entrust my well-being to you? Whether you're a financial planner, a doctor, or whatever, why should I trust you? And our why really helps answer that. So that was a long-winded answer to the question, what's the number one thing that people need to know to make their businesses successful? Yeah. It's your why. In uh, I was reading a book on the plane home yesterday, and it was talking about your why and basically this age of average and society is trying to just makes you average. They kind of want you to everybody to blend in and nobody, you know, they don't want any sore thumbs. And um, this, and in this age of average, everything becomes a commodity. Everything goes to zero, mm -hmm. just like you're describing. And the only way to really, you know, stand out, like be an Apple or a Google or Facebook, that type of brand, you have to be different. And so kind of, when it gets more competitive, you have to be different. You don't become better, you become different, which is yeah. fascinating. Really insightful book, Sally Hogsme. Really, so, in, go ahead, well, sorry. I was just going to say, and service professionals in particular, one of the biggest changes in the last five years, um, decade, but really the last few years, especially since COVID, is uh, we are now literally competing on a global state. You can go to telemedicine for answers. You can go to, you know, Zoom sessions with a specialist around the world, et cetera. It's, we are so much more commodities than we ever have been in any time in history. And so the only way we can differentiate ourselves, it, it can't be on expertise because that's not enough. Um, there are lots of people who know what you know, and you can be a stellar expert, heads and shoulders above the others. And there's still probably a dozen people in the world you're competing with, even if you're in a category of one. Most people are not. So to avoid being commoditized, we need to find out what truly makes us different. And the only thing that makes us truly different is who we are as a human being. Let our note in the choir, the note that we uniquely sing. And the choir is not a suite without us, but without knowing what our note is in that choir is, we can't answer the question, why should you work with me? Yeah. Why should you trust me? Yeah. So what's next? What's the, how do clients know the right next step in the right stage for getting their next 10 clients or going to the next level? Well, there's a, a couple of things in that. One of the things that I think is really important for people to know, especially entrepreneurs and, and service professionals, because uh, you're an entrepreneur as well, you're selling your expertise, is what stage of business are you at? And what works at that stage and what doesn't? Because in our in our in the expertpreneur world, the online expertise world, there's a lot of people who are trying to leap up the mountain in one leap. Um, you've probably seen them. You know, they they're trying to do very scaled things, and they don't have the authority, the influence, the context, the list. They don't have the list of forty or fifty thousand, but they're trying to fill you know a room with two hundred people. Be at the stage you're at, do the tactics and strategies that work at that stage so you can be successful in getting up the mountain further one step at a time, not trying to leap up to the top. So that's one of the tactical things that's really important is know what stage you're at. Two, know how to differentiate yourself in a crowded marketplace. Part of that is your why. I call it the three whys and a what. Why, why do you do what you do? Why should I pick you instead of anyone else? Why do I need what you have? And even if, again, even if you're a doctor or someone who they absolutely need what you have, they still need to know why I need it from you versus the person down the street. The what. So three whys and a what. The what is the what the heck do I sell? How do I package it, price it, and position it so that it makes a difference? And and I know in you know industries where it's kind of regulated and you know if you're a chiropractor, this is the fee you get for your visit if you're, a, you know, et cetera. There is still a way to make additional income by packaging your expertise, by creating training courses, by adding value with products and, and other services. There's strategies for building a practice that doesn't rely on you being in the office, you know, eight to 10 hours a day, 
And really, that there's no way to get to financial freedom and time freedom, which is even more important these days, without having some kind of strategy that really has you clear on what's next, what's going to work for me, because not everything works for everybody. Cookie cutters are for cookies, not for business models. And what really matters to me? How do I build my, my life or my business around my life? rather than the other way around because most people have their life built around their business and that's that's why they're unhappy unsatisfied getting divorced on you know marriage number three etc 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 so let's get back to building the business around the life and creating the life that you really want intentionally you know and and with with some commitment to there is more because I think there's a an epidemic of I have a great life. How come I'm not happy? A lot of it is the lack of meaning. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So so well said. And um, you know what's interesting is uh, you know if it's like somebody saying I want to make a lot of money, and then it's like okay, there's like a million ways to do that. You know why are you choosing this one? So know your why and um and just mm. and what's a lot of money and why <laughs> do you want to make it? Yeah. Is it that is, is it so that you can have a freedom lifestyle? Why do you want to make money? Because money is just a bunch of dead weight guys on paper. Like it's no meaning whatsoever. So what's it a what's it a key to? What what do you want to unlock? Because yeah. chances are there are about, you know, probably a dozen ways to to get what you want easier than making a whole bunch of money. Right. Yeah. So and to get it now instead of someday when. Yeah. So yeah. And and there's no there's no worse feeling than reaching a goal and being like, is that it? Or oh man, I missed out on this. You know, it's like reaching it and be like, you know, what is this? Uh, you know, so many, some of my colleagues, you know, myself included, you know, it's like, what is the meaning of this? And you mm-hmm. know, some of them are on their fourth, fifth marriages, you know, mid forties. You know, it's just, it's just. But uh, don't how- know them or don't want to know them, you know, stuff like that. And and it's really sad because it's um, it's that kind of thing that keeps people up at night. Yeah. It's that kind of thing that creates regret. Mm. And that regret is curable. That regret is avoidable. But if it's too late, it is curable and healable. But only if people actually take the actions to stop, to pause, to say what really matters to me. Mm. What is I want to be in the world, in my family, in my community, in my practice, in my whatever. Who do I need to be to change these outcomes now? Yeah. So a lot of a lot of the work is I call it the inner and outer work of business. Um, you know, the biggest one of the biggest blocks to us, our success is between the four inches between our ears. It's not the tactics or the strategies or the market or the right, you know, investment counselor. It's the limiting beliefs that we have that get in the way of us really being clear and showing up for ourselves in a way that allows us to really make that difference. Um, So it's getting those four inches working, then getting the business working. Yeah, Um, I think that's what uh, would support a lot of people in, in reversing the, okay, that goal was is done next 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 how come i'm not happy next next maybe the next thing will make me happy oh no how about the next thing and then we don't celebrate along the way it's sad yeah what a fascinating discussion um all of jeanette's resources will be in the links and show notes as well as contact and social media and with that thanks so much for coming on to the podcast Thank you so much, Christopher. I really appreciate you and the work that you do. And I appreciate you supporting people who make such a big difference in the world um, because they often don't get enough appreciation and they often don't get enough uh, support. So for any of you who are listening, call in more support. You deserve it. listening if you liked it be sure to like comment share subscribe we're on everywhere spotify itunes google amazon audible and without much ado be sure to thank this show's sponsors and we'll see you next week